in question number 51 we are basically provided with two planes here is one plane plane p1 the equation of the plane p1 is x plus 2y minus z plus 1 equals to 0 and then there is another plane which is p2 and the equation of the plane p2 is given as 2x minus y plus z minus 1 equal to 0. Now basically what the question is saying is there is a line L and suppose that all the points on that line L are at constant distance from P1 as well as from P2. That means the distance of the all points on the line L from point for, from plane P1 are going to be constant. By this I can conclude that that line L has to be parallel to plane P1 so that all the points on line L are at the same distance from point P. But the same constraint is given with plane P2 that all the, dis all the points distance on the line L from plane P2 has to be constant. So from that I can also conclude that line L remains parallel to plane P2. Now that means that line L is parallel to plane P1 as well as plane P2 and that means that the line L is parallel to the line of intersection of plane P1 and P2. That means the line is something like this parallel to the line of intersection. This is the conclusion and the line is supposed to pass through 0, 0, 0. So first of all what we do here is we write the equation of the line L. For that we will need the parallel vector of the line L and parallel vector of the line L can be very easily obtained. It will be ijk 1 2 minus 1 and then you have 2 minus 1 1. So it is just a manipulation so I think we can directly write and that will come out to be i minus 3j minus 5k. So the equation of line L, equation of line L can be written as x upon 3 equals to y upon minus 3, x upon 1 equals to y upon minus 3 equal to z upon minus 5. Let us say this is equal to lambda. Therefore, the coordinate of any point, let us say A on line L can be assumed as lambda minus 3 lambda minus 5 lambda. Now what the question further says is from this variable point A we drop perpendicular on the plane P1 and the foot of the perpendicular alpha beta gamma is our locus point. So we have to basically find the equation for alpha beta and gamma. Now the first thing that we say here is let us say this is point P. So that vector AP is going to be parallel to the normal vector of this plane. Now the normal vector of the plane P1 is i cap plus 2j cap minus k cap. So what I can say here is alpha minus lambda alpha minus lambda divided by 1 equal to beta plus 3 lambda beta plus 3 lambda divided by 2 equal to gamma plus 5 lambda divided by minus 1 and let us call this to be equal to k. That means alpha is equal to k plus lambda, beta is equal to 2k minus 3 lambda and gamma is equal to minus k minus 5 lambda. Now let us say this is equation 1 in itself. Now what we can see here is the foot of the perpendicular has got a primary property that it lies on the plane P1. So we can say that we can substitute this over here also. So we have alpha plus 2 beta minus gamma plus 1 equals to 0. But alpha, beta and gamma are in terms of k and lambda so we put it over there. So we have k plus lambda plus 4k minus 6 lambda 
plus k plus 5 lambda plus 1 equal to 0. Now, if you observe this equation carefully, what you will find is lambda terms are getting cancelled. So, it is fine. What we are left with is 5k plus k that makes it 6k and then plus 1 equal to 0, so minus 1. That means k's value is equal to minus 1 by 6. So, if we put that k's value in equation 1, so from 1 we have alpha equal to minus 1 by 6 plus lambda. I can now call alpha, beta, gamma to be x, y and z as I think I have got the locus. So, in place of alpha I write x is equal to minus 1 by 6 plus uh, lambda, y is equal to minus 1 by 3 minus 3 lambda and z is equal to 1 by 6 minus 5 lambda. Now, we can understand easily that this is the equation of the line and this point basically lies on the line. If you bring over here, we can write this in the symmetrical form as x minus of minus 1 by 6 divided by 1 equals to y minus of minus 1 by 3 divided by minus 3 equal to z minus 1 by 6 divided by minus 5 equal to lambda. So, now we have got the equation of the locus and we have to just put the options and see which of the following points lie on this particular locus. By checking we can easily see that option number A and option number B are the correct answer to this question.